Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm talking about short circuit evaluation, which is not very complicated, but it sounds really cool, which makes you sound smart. And that's what all software developers secretly love. So in order to get started, let's go through some examples. First of all, unless you're totally unfamiliar with programming and programming languages, this is a fairly obvious piece of code. We are assigning the value x, the variable named x, to the value true, and then we're printing it out. Now we know how that works, but in order to explore short circuit evaluation, we need to work with the Boolean operators. So in this case, we'll be starting with and. If we have true and true, x is still true. And if we have true and false, mar, false, there we go, then we get false, which we, we would expect logically. True and false combined are not both true. So one of them, with one of them being falsy, we must return the falsy value. So we return false. Likewise, if we flip these and we do false and true, and we run this, we still get false. So you would be forgiven if you thought that what was happening here was we were evaluating the left side, evaluating the right side, and if both were truthy, returning true, and if both were falsy, returning false. Or if any of them, sorry, are falsy, returning false. But that's not actually what happens. So we'll start with the first thing, which is that we evaluate the left side first. So the left side in this case is the primitive value false, which is obviously falsy. And so instead of evaluating this, the rightmost expression, the AND operator will actually short circuit the evaluation. In, otherwise, in other words, it won't evaluate the expression on the right. And instead, it will just return the first expression. So we get false. So that makes it more efficient than having to do the entire evaluation, even though it already knows that it has a falsy value. Now we can prove that by doing something like console logging. And if we run this, we don't see, oh hi, but if instead we use true, this will be evaluated, it'll be truthy. So the right side will be evaluated and that will be falsy. And instead of, uh, Take your guesses. What will the return value be? What will the value of x be when we console log it out? It is undefined. So that is one of the important things to understand with how the Boolean operators work. We're used to seeing them oftentimes in logical expressions that work with Booleans, things like if blocks. So if you have an if and then a bunch of conditions and you join them with ands, it's going to evaluate to a single Boolean expression. But what actually happens with and is it is going to evaluate the leftmost expression. And if the resulting value is truthy, it will evaluate the rightmost expression. And if there is another and here, this expression returning a truthy value will cause that next and operator to evaluate the rightmost expression, uh, uh, the <laughs> expression on the right of that operator as well. So it'll continue on and on. But it's not going to return a boolean unless the return value is a boolean. It simply returns the evaluated value. So if we were to do something like return penguins, because penguins are the best and everything's better with penguins, we would actually get the result penguins. So in other words, x equals penguins. And that's because it's going to evaluate true true returns the value true, so it evaluates the rightmost value or expression, and its return value is penguins. Now, because I only write the best JavaScript, I use the comma operator, which is not confusing at all. But just keep in mind that what we're doing here is evaluating the left, then evaluating the right, and if the leftmost is falsy, then we don't evaluate the right, and it's more efficient. It is called short-circuiting the evaluation. Now, what this allows us to do is useful stuff like avoiding runtime exceptions. So if we have something like person and we want it to get person.age and it's greater than 18, uh, then we could do something like console log that you are older than 18. You are older 
then 18. Mm. Now this works fine. Let's give it a person. Uh, age, and they will be 12. So now if we run this, we get a runtime expression. X is not defined. That is because we don't have an X anymore. Get rid of that. Let's clear this whole thing. It's a mess. Clear. There we go. And we don't see anything. And that is because it is less than 18. So let's give it a truthy value and see if we get our console log. And we do. So that is what we expect. But what happens if, for example, per, we're doing a database lookup? So let's say we're just fetching a person. If we fail that database lookup and we don't return a valid object, so in the case of JavaScript, we need to return something that could have a age property on it. So even if we got rid of this completely and it's just an empty object, this won't throw a runtime exception because person.age will just return undefined. So it won't run that if block, because it will be false. Undefined is not greater than 18. But it doesn't throw a runtime exception. However, if person was just undefined, so we'll just do let person, undefined.age is not a valid property accessor. So if we try to run this, then we get a runtime exception. And so in order to, you, to get around this, we could do short circuit evaluation. So we could check before we do this accessing of a property that might not exist, we can do if person does not equal undefined and person.age is greater than 18, then console log this out. And now there's no runtime exception. It's not useful in this particular case, but it prevents us from having these sort of type errors. So that's very, very useful for avoiding things that you don't want to have uh, happen, things that can be very difficult to handle at runtime. Now, that's the primary use of it. The way that it can trip people up, it being short circuit evaluation, is when you have something that gets a little clever. So let's say that we have a couple functions. It doesn't really matter what they do. So let's just call them f, and we'll have it just return a 5. And we'll make a g that returns a 6. Oops, not a, a g that returns a 6. My brain just broke there for a second. Mm. There we go. And so if we wanted to assign a return value, or a value to the value x, we could actually do something like uh, f and g. And then if x returned a false, or if f returned a falsy value, g would not be run. Otherwise, if f returns a truthy value, then x will be assigned the value of g. So if we do this. I need to console log x, otherwise we can't see it. And I will also clear my console because it is a mess. We get 6, and that is because g got run because f returned a truthy value. Let's instead return a 0. And now x equals 0 because f returned a falsy value. And remember, it's the value that gets returned from the expression that gets returned from an AND joining, not a Boolean value. So this is where people can kind of get clever. Uh, it can be useful if you have, for example, a very expensive operation. So if G was very, very expensive, say this took uh, 100,000 times I don't know how many zeros I need to have, uh, more expensive than f, we would not want to have g run every single time. We would put f on the leftmost side. And that way, we would only run g if we absolutely had to. So that can be one useful way of doing it. Another way could be if f, or if g, the uh, return of g depended on the success of f. So maybe we had. Maybe this, I don't know, checks for the user and then returns 
true if the user exists. Uh, that way we could, that'd be another way of avoiding that runtime exception. And then this G was going to access that user's value. So just returns a user's value, uh, returns the user's value. Let's just say it's 12. That way we're not going to run G unless F has been successful and then we'll return to X the value of G. That's one of the ways you can use short circuit evaluation. I tend to find this a bit difficult to parse mentally. It's not the most obvious code solution, but it can be very useful, particularly in that performance category that I mentioned a few minutes ago. The way that I finally wrapped my brain around this when I was first learning about it was thinking about command line tools or uh, command line commands, I suppose. If I'm doing something like make directory, uh, new dir, and cd into new dir, this second command isn't run unless this first one was successful. So if I tried to make uh, a bunch of new uh, paths that didn't exist and I didn't put the dash p flag, this is going to fail so it won't try to cd into the new directory. That's one way that I wrapped my head around it. I said, okay, these are really just steps. And so f is the first step, g is the second step, and we'll only execute g if f was successful. And that's the basics of short circuit evaluation. Now the ways you can get kind of interesting with this is let's say that we want G if F is successful, but if F is unsuccessful, we actually want to check for another option. Uh, it'll just be H. And it will just return as all things should penguins. So now if the com if either of these, f or g, are falsy, then we'll get h. So let's go false. Now we get penguins. And that's because if we go through the order of operations, and is going to check its leftmost value, or its leftmost expression, it was falsy in this case, the actual value false. So it skips over and doesn't run g, it's just done. And then because this whole thing has now returned an ex or evaluated to a expression or to a value, sorry, and its value was false, the or operator needs to see if it has any other options that could be true because the or won't, looks for any truthy value. So it says, all right, I got a falsy one, let's try this next value. And so the next value happens to be penguins, so it returns penguins, that is truthy. And that's how we got penguins. Now, if we change this to be true, then we get 12, and that's because f was executed. Oops, f was executed, it returned true, and then returned the value from g, which was 12, because it was truthy, or said, all right, cool, I have a truthy value, I can just return that, I don't need to check anything else in my any of, any of my other options. I don't need to check the rightmost value. And that's because or is basically just the inverse of and. It will short circuit any evaluation once it has a truthy value, whereas and will short circuit an evaluation once it has a falsy value. And that short circuit evaluation, take it, use it, potentially don't use it in certain places because it's confusing, but at least it will give you a bit of an insight into what someone else is doing if they're trying to get cute or clever with their logic. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, and it was a horrible video, you can also let me know and I'll probably just troll you in response, but I appreciate the feedback. And hopefully I'll make another video because I'm not actually dead. I know it's been a while. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.